Hello, for IGN, I'm Luke Carmali, and with me is Mr. Daniel Kruper. Hello, everyone. And we're here today to show you a lovely little game called Scourge Outbreak. Now, is it a lovely little game, Luke? I may have oversold it slightly. You know what? It's all right. I think um, you're thinking this because you, you were like, surprisingly quite good at this. I'm literally amazed at all. I'm actually incredibly good at the multiplayer. quite terrible at shooters. Yeah. By your own admission, I'm not being cruel. No, it's true. Um, Scourge Outbreak is a third-person shooter. It is indeed. Um, and at the moment, it's only available on Xbox Live Arcade for 800 Microsoft points, but it is, I believe, planned for the PlayStation I think, 3. Yeah, I think because of that kind of the requirements for getting Xbox Live, it's come out on that platform first. Now, um, Outbreak, Scourge Outbreak, was actually originally released back in April 2010 on PC via Steam under the title Scourge Project, Episodes 1 and 2, but um, the developer, who are based in Mallorca, Mallorca, lucky them, very nice, um, weren't really happy with it. Um, they thought it was quite unpolished, so they've taken a shot um, over the last couple of years on um, porting it to um, console, so here you go, Scourge Outbreak. Lovely, lovely. Um, so, but one of the difficulties with that is on Steam, I think it was like 6 gigabytes. To be on Xbox Live, you have to be under 2 gigs, so a lot of that time has been spent filleting it, reducing the game, improving some bits, removing other bits. Uh, here's the title menu, yep. uh, main menu, single player. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this video, we're going to show you a little bit of the very first level of the campaign, yeah. which is um, about 6 hours plus. Yeah, I mean, multiplayer is kind of what you'd expect. It's, you know, you've, you've got your co-op, your team deathmatch, that kind of stuff. And then the, I think the emphasis with this game is, one, it's value, it's 800 Microsoft points, but it's also, um, it's four-player co-op. A lot of the things we're going to see and we'll talk about briefly in this video is the emphasis is all on co-op and yeah. how you'll experience different aspects of the narrative depending on which character you play. Yeah, so that's quite exciting. The characters themselves, having said that, they are quite generic. I mean, you've got your standard... You've got your token woman. You've got the one who's always wearing, you know, She's wears a mask. Called token woman. She's called token. Uh, no, and they've all got. Um, you've got the one who kind of wears a mask and is like a cyber ninja guy who's really good at martial arts. Well, here we here go. We're going to hear see some of them. So we're going to sl briefly flip through there each go. one, token, and then we'll go back through them in a little bit more detail. So they're called Stonewall, Amp, Mass, and Shade. Shade being the generic. <laughs> oh wow, he looks original. So look, let's go. Back through him a bit more. So he's just like token man. Slightly different attributes for each one. It's worth saying each one has special abilities, but they are kind of not that much variation. Each one has a specific type of shockwave. Yeah. Uh, and a shield as well. And a shield. Some of these are static, some of the dynamics, so they move with you as you move the character. But really, they're not that special. They're not that unique to the character. Just slight variations of standard powers. Yeah, I mean, when you compare it to something like Fuse, which obviously isn't completely fair, huge he different price brackets, but you know. It's um, it, it, they is, it's much more varied and fused. Yeah, he looks very like the like the nano suit that you get from Crisis and the mask from like Scorpion or something. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of familiarity. There's a lot of kind of tropes and genre touchstones that are kind of recycled by Project. Um, oh, I should say Scourge Outbreak. Yeah, it's it's it, it's you know it's enjoyable enough. It handles fairly smoothly. Um, and I don't know. I mean, there is. There didn't seem to be that much kind of at stake when choosing your character, really. And obviously, it, you can't, if you're playing co-op, you can't be the same character as, as a friend as well. It's worth knowing. And here we go. Here's Shade. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's got... He's a ninja. A lot of scars and a funny coloured eye. I think that's called Heteroglossia when you've got eyes of two different shades. There you go. Like Kate Bosworth. Oh, see, there you go. There you or go. like some... Apparently Dalmatians have a higher instance of Heteroglossia than any other dog. Fact. So, as well as deafness. Yes. No, surely it's huskies that have heteroglossia. Mm, apparently Dalmatians. This is actually, I was looking up Dalmatians the other day. So this there is you go. Um, Luke and I will mainly do commentaries featuring facts about genetic variation in dogs. In dogs, so there you go. Enjoy that. So there you go. This is the first level of the game. This is what you see. Um, we're, picking, we're playing as Shade, but you can play as any of the other characters and indeed be joined by three of your friends. Yes. So what's worth saying is when you get to kind of key narrative moments, each character will um, sometimes experience different parts of the narrative. So you're kind of like piecing it together collectively. Yeah, there's like um, a flashback to kind of a briefing that they've been given and each of them have been given different briefs and stuff. Um, so, so that's quite interesting and um, you know I, d I don't think it has the depth uh, really that you'd want to go back and play as each of the characters no I mean the, when we were talking to the developers about it they did make the point it's kind of to do with you know you want to kind of be in, when you're playing co-op you want to take it so that you're stopping and together you're working out trying to you know piece together the, the, you know, the story ahead of time ahead of revelations which so I guess is kind yeah. of 
It's it's a nice idea, but in terms of how well it actually works, so, I, you're right. So let's get going. He, he uses it. You know, it handles very much like I guess Gears of War. I think it's a little bit more clunky than that. It's got the roadie run if you hold down A, and you can like barrel roll and take cover in very similar ways. But I think it's just a little bit too kind of clunky compared to those games, which are incredibly Echo. slick. Mm. In, Echo, yeah. So you hear the four main characters. You've got your standard. It's cover based as well, isn't it? It's well? is cover based. And I think um, from Project um, Scourge to Outbreak, they've kind of polished it, polished up some of those kind of cover okay. mechanics, which I think in the original weren't too good. Yeah. I mean, the weapons are quite. I mean, you know, the weapons kind of do what you'd expect them to do, right? Which is all right. Yeah, I think the, the weapons are fine. I think they lack, you know, I keep saying the comparison, but it is very reminiscent of Gears of War. I think if you look at the armor on some of these characters, it's very reminiscent of like the cogs, especially the big heavy guy who's got the blue face paint. That's very cog-like armor. Yeah. It's very chunky. It's very muscular. Um, I think the weapons are just kind of don't have the character of something as you know, like the Lancer does. No. The Lancer is an iconic video game weapon, but... I don't think any of these weapons really have that kind of, um, I don't know, idiosyncrasies to them. Yeah, what did you find about the AI? How did you find that? I thought they were, it, you know, none of, I found none of the my companion AI was particularly annoying. They were kind of always very reliable in helping you out. They don't kind of wander off, so that's definitely a plus because I think that's always really frustrating. Yeah. But it is very clear to me that Scourge Outbreak is designed to be played with your mates. Mm. And, you know, for the price of 800 Microsoft points, it's not asking too much of your friends if you want to play it together. Yeah. See, the water looks a bit, just a bit... Mm. Well, they're it's using Unreal Engine 3, but I don't think they're really getting the most out of it. Like, they said that it was AAA production values, but I think that's a bit... Possibly a bit generous. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it, it's fine enough, and you get an experience point as well there for kills. What do they do? Um, s slight unlockables, but I think it's also incentivizing competition between you and your mates. Once okay. you get to every major chapter, you'll get screens comparing kills. You know, I think it's kind of friendly, friendly rivalry. Yes, yeah, like kind of encouraging you to get more kills and stuff. You know, and this is during the cutscene where it's kind of like enforced walking. Yeah. Oh bless. Is it? I mean, it's it's. Yeah, it was fun enough. We played it. We played the multiplayer session. I think for what two and a half, three hours or something, and it was, you know, it's fun. I mean, I loved it. I was winning, but um, it's nothing. It's nothing I haven't played before, you know, which is a, a bit of a downer. And especially, I mean, again, as you said, the, it's you know the good thing about it is it's it's cheap, and it's by no means an ugly game. Uh, yeah, I, th I think in some moments it looks better than others. Uh, it's, it's, it looks like an Unreal, Unreal Engine 3 game. <laughs> like, yeah. It looks like one of those. Um, very small teams made it. I think, you know, the way to really sell this game is, is a value proposition. But saying that, there are a lot of other great games you can get for 800 Microsoft points. What's good about this is maybe the amount of content, six-hour campaign, the multiplayer stuff. But again... There's possibly this stuff you could spend those Microsoft points on. I mean, this is this does look, you know, this environment looks quite nice. But later there is a lot of um, a lot of stuff you'll have seen before, like you break into this kind of facility, and as you can imagine, there's yeah, lots of red lights. I almost you think know. this is quite the This is one of the most kind of verdant, interesting environments. Nice like a lot of the multiplayer environments look very, very similar, kind of like ruins. Te um, sort of. If you like grey and brown, you were in for a treat, my friends. <laughs> I think a lot of games on this generation, if you like grey and brown, you, you've been. And in again, for the a Unreal, treat. the Unreal Engine three has been especially designed to work with those colours. So yeah, it's um, it's you know, it's all right. So I'm just sniping people from a distance. <laughs> yeah, skills. I'm a coward. So like the barrel rolling and like moving between cover is all like really functional. It's not particularly smooth, but you know, it's not frustrating. No, it isn't like you know glitch. It's very functional. Yeah, it's quite. Uh, and also like when you're playing co-op, obviously they've got. It is, it is fully functional as a co-op game. You know, you do have markers to see where your teammates are if you get lost or something. And, you can, and, and there is playing, spawning as well. Yeah, and if it's just worth saying what I'm doing here, if you play in single player, you can issue commands so you can tell which ones to take up to kill. Uh, oh, that's oh, the thing. When I've you, done very well there. When you die, yeah, you can revive each other like that. Um, so, which is obviously what something you want to do. Um, and when we were playing four-player co-op, there was a few hilarious moments of us basically trying to take on too many enemies at once, and rather than actually just shooting, yeah, it was just running really around, resing sections. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 there is actually quite a nice difficulty curve. It's not 
easy. Yeah, stretch. I think it punishes you if you don't actually function as a team and just kind of all run in and charge in. Like, yeah. we all Leroy Jenkins several times. Yeah, and you get you and get we, focus we fire suffered. down. Yeah, you get focus fire down in like a second, which is which is good. You know, it's a nice. You can't coast through it, and it does make you make the most of it. But as as we've already said, you yeah. really do get but the most it, of it. With for instance, there's a little touch like this. So um, we've kind of cleared this area, and we're going to progress to the next section. And you do this like by hacking the terminal. But because it's two gigabytes, and they've made lots of compromises to kind of retain the graphics and pack in a lot of content, it's like little touches like hacking this console isn't, you know, in another game it would be like a mini game or it would have a more elaborate interface. It's basically that. Wow. And I think that kind of sums it up. You know, there's a lot of ambition. They try to pack a lot in, but it's always limited by the size and the time they've had to put in it and the team size. But that's Scourge Outbreak, yeah. and that's 800 Microsoft points that's out on Xbox Live now. And PS3 in the near future. 